low spin with an abundance of forgiveness. It's just arrived in at four golf Chester. It's the Mizuno ST200. This is the one with the less amount of adjustability, if you like. But I've just read the first quote from Mizuno Spiel, low spin with unbelievable forgiveness. They don't use the word unbelievable. It's a bit better than that one. But I like the sound of it. I like the look of it. We'll talk a bit more about that in a minute or two. But let's get in some golf balls down here at Four Golf Chester and see if this driver pitched in at 299 can mix it with the big boys. Right, so let's just talk about this price point for a little bit because what is it that you want from a driver? Um, massive amount of uh, complaints is the wrong word but uh, no one's liking this price point at the minute this 450 sort of barometer or 400 plus let's say in terms of drivers but there's been a couple of products that have come out of late i reviewed uh, a cleveland product uh, last week that's in around the 270 mark uh, i'm going to be reviewing today uh, the cobra speed zone driver again 299 and we've got this driver, that might be 349, actually the Cobra, I'll check that before, uh, so don't quote me on that bit. But this ST200 is quoted at 299 on the shelf. And for me, all those people who complain about the price of stuff, then I think if this performs, then it's a real answer to those problems. Let's forget those 450 plus drivers and let's have a look at some of these King Cobras, Clevelands, Mizuno. Surely it's a massive opportunity for them to uh, pinch a bit of this driver market. First of all, let's talk about its look. Shelf appeal wise, I think it looks superb. There's nothing to suggest it's a cheap driver in terms of its looks. It's still got a fantastic finish. Looks great underneath. I think plenty of people will go to it. I like the fact there's not a lot going on. I'm not reviewing its uh, sort of sister product, but the idea of those uh, two adjustable weights, again, it gets a little bit complicated for me. But then you turn it over and it's got classic driver looks. It's a high gloss finish. It's got this sort of carbon underpin that looks really nice. I haven't got on a shaft yet, so we'll talk about that address very shortly. But in terms of off the shelf, profile of head, absolute winner. And that price drag as well, I think it's going to attract plenty of attention this. But it doesn't matter unless it performs well. So uh, this time we will get into some golf balls. Right, first thing to note before we go any further, I'm going to go with the old trusted 10 side blue. It's nine and a half degree as a driver head. And we're going to stick it on a sort of standard setting. So that's the, uh, if I can find it, where are you? I think... Right, let me get that sorted and uh, we'll crack on. I think that for me, comments down below, first of all, how many of you are using, first of all, tried a Mizuno driver? How many of you would, uh, have got one in the bag? How many of you tried the ST200? Right, that's killed a few seconds while I get sorted. Right, we're good to go. I'll hit some range balls to get started. I've warmed up, I'm good to go. And I'll give you some feedback and then we'll get onto some seed golf balls, some proper balls and we'll get some data collected. Right, first opinions, like I said, let's have a look at address. I mean, it sits really nice. I'm not gonna go through all the claims in terms of what Mizuno claim this driver will do, but it's very much the same, because it's the same tail, isn't it? Fast ball speeds, they're claiming low spinning and they're claiming plenty of forgiveness. So at address again, going back to that position, sits really nice. I'd prefer if it didn't have the Mizuno logo sat directly behind the ball. It's a bit of an odd shaped logo, so not something that sits particularly sort of uh, square on my eye. So yeah, I'm not overly keen on that. But in terms of how the crown looks, very much classic in its shape. It's not too elongated. It sits very nice indeed and a bit of a confidence inspirer. Right. I won't talk about sound because like I said, I'm gonna use, use a range ball for this purpose. It's a good start in terms of line and direction. So I'll be happy with that. If we go off sound off that, and like I said, it's always different in here, and it's always different using range balls. So maybe I'll confirm that a bit later, but uh, I would certainly say again, one thing that for me, it's an important part is that they can be either really high pitched or very sort of dull and muted. And to be fair, it sits right in between. I would say again, from what I've tested of late, it's, it's got a lot of similarities, both looks from above and sound and feel of what I just hit to the Maverick range. 
and that being a, a very much a positive as well. Just hit another ball and see what we can sort of... Well, if straightness was a factor, we'll forget. I'll go and have a look at distance and all the rest of it very shortly, but we have a pylon in the distance, which is the target line, and believe me, neither of them are too far off, so that's an half-decent start. I think I will carry on hitting some golf balls, maybe get a breath in between. We'll switch over then to some proper balls, like I said, collect some data when I've got that swing speed up and we'll sort of analyse the performance of this club, but maybe have a look in terms of how it matches up from the clubs I've tested in recent weeks, the likes of the, the Maverick, the likes of the Sim. Let's have a look in terms of if I can get that sort of, uh, it's all about for me getting club head speed at similar to what we've done in previous tests and then maybe we can draw some parallels and see how this is performing in terms of ball speeds and then we'll look at dispersion as well. Right, so as ever, I'll try and keep this short and sweet and simple. Unfortunately, I've not had an opportunity to take this on the course, this product, which I always like to do and see how it does in terms of performance. But for me, what we've achieved so far is very easy and straightforward and one that I can get to some results quite quickly. So I'm going to throw you up what I got sort of five shots in that were of similar in terms of club head speed. You'll see an average air 94.7 with a ball speed of 145.3. Spinning at 2.6, now arguably the spin number across the board there you'll see, although an average of 2.6, it did pop up a few times and arguably a little bit spinny in terms of where you'd want to be and will have some impacts in terms of uh, that overall distance and what we look to achieve from the driver. Um, so getting this club a little bit more dialed in, I'm sure we could tweak that number and bring it down and get some better performance out of it. Um, overall carry, 235.6. I'm just having a look again just across the board there in terms of everything relative to club head speed and where they went up and when they went down it was simply down to what i achieved in terms of club head speed but again good to go back to that ball speed very consistent across every shot and maintained a good ball speed i can't measure personally i don't measure where i've hit it on the club face itself i would guess that i'm spraying it around a little bit around that club face the sweet spot so the idea that ball speeds have been maintained across those five shots, very, very similar, suggests to me. It's got a bit of forgiveness in there, certainly helping me out. 11.9 um, in, um, in terms of launch angle. It wasn't the highest. It was quite, again, um, the more penetrating type of ball flight. I actually liked the ball flight and that 11.9 launch, it certainly wasn't ballooning up there and neither at that 80 peak height, it wasn't either. Again, uh, probably on the lower end, I would have suggested rather than higher. Um, and yet that overall number, well, it's very much a, a calculation number that's based on those other bits and carrying out at 260, 230 odd, whatever it was, carry. Very similar to the numbers that I would have achieved. And I think before we go any further, the one bit I said I would do and I've forgotten about is we'll just have a little look back on last week's number, which will mean we've got to hit the pause button here while I go and collect that data. One second. Right, I'm back. I'm back with data. Let's throw these up for you. Maverick and Sim from last week. Um, slightly quicker in terms of swing speed, club head speed, so 96 and 95, so don't forget to bear that in mind. A 146, 148 club head speed, 145, so yes, it was uh, quicker in terms of ball speed, but there's a quicker average swing speed. Um, spin number higher with the Maverick, similar in terms of the number on the Sim. Launch angle, again, they both launched higher with the Sim and the Maverick and the peak height was considerably different. And I think that's pretty much fair to say, to be honest with you, I did notice that. Surprised me a little bit, but those other two products, particularly the Maverick, was absolutely ballooning the ball up there. But don't forget, there's adjustability in those club heads, there's adjustability in terms of the uh, loft being the main one, that we could uh, make some differences there and uh, change things up if required. I think the overall assessment is very simple and you can probably work out for yourself. At 299, Mizuno have got a proper driver on their hands here because it ticks the box in terms of looks. It certainly matches up in terms of performance and drivers that are 100, 140, 150 quid more expensive. Uh, so it's got to be one you've got to consider. I think the issue will always be, because last year's ST100, whatever it was, product was very, very good. I don't know the sales numbers, but it tends to be for me, Irons, Mizuno, do you think drivers in the same way? I'm not so sure, and that's the question that uh, we can start answering in the comments uh, below, because if it was based on performance rather than perception, absolutely superb, ticks a lot of boxes, the price one being absolutely massive. Anyway, 
as ever that's me done it's simple and straightforward it's my honest assessment and uh, i hope you enjoyed it keep on watching because i'm about to test another one of these that fits into that lower price category it's a cobra speed zone i'm late on the scene with this but i'm going to give it a go